The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Campin' is Out, broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys Training Camp on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. And now your host, Shannon Gross. Welcome to a special edition of Camping Out. We were supposed to be off today, but you know what? When business calls, we show up. This is a very special show because normally it's just me and uh, Shannon Gross and Nate Newton, but we are joined today by our good buddy Isaiah Stanbeck. How you doing, Isaiah? Good, Isaiah, free show. Yeah. Hey Patrick Walker, how you doing, Patrick? Doing well. How's it going? You, you know? You've been on before. You've been yes, on. Sir, you've been yes, on the sir, show yes, before. AKA Okra. Well, we are coming live <laughs> King to you Okra. from Oxnard <laughs> training camp because the Cowboys just signed a free agent player, a linebacker, somebody that his name came up quite a bit whenever the off season was rolling around. Uh, Anthony Barr. What? What? Why now, guys? Why? Why wait till we get to camp? Why not? I mean. Why now? What what well, happened? They What's... had a little bit of a reminder in terms of what their depth looked like after <laughs> the real Cox missed practice yesterday. They said he had a little contusion or bump knees or whatever it may be. Uh, but they had an opportunity to see what a, a padded practice looked like without that without their guy there. And they're like, huh, well, let's let's not go into another year in the same situation that we're in currently. Let's go ahead and address this this position. And I agree 100% with Coach Edwards being here, man. That that was just – he knows what he wants. He knows how to play the gaps. He's a veteran guy. Uh, as Patrick said earlier, he's got sticky hands, but he had three interceptions three last year. Three interceptions last year. So he year. knows how to get back in coverages and how to do things, and that may free up somebody else to rush mm. that pass. And, and there you go. And, and to that point, at that, as Isaiah made, I think it's a situation where the Cowboys had longtime interest in Anthony Barr. But, you know, the financials weren't necessarily there, but they came in. They saw some guys in pads. Jabril Cox missed because of a little bit of an injury. They're resting him until Thursday. Sat back and said, hey, you know what? This little bit of a a financial gap we have with Anthony Barr, call him and close that gap right now. Let's get him in training camp. So exciting addition for the Cowboys. So what you're saying is they they – Threw a little line of gun at gunpowder and uh-huh. kind of sparked, uh-huh. sparked it up. It yeah, yeah, really <laughs> ran up yeah. a little bit of yeah. space. And, and, and now it's lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's lit. Yeah. Well, if you look at his stats over the last, I think he's been in the league nine years, you're getting about a 60 tackle a year guy, two or three sacks a year. He's, you know, he's been in the league nine years. What else are you getting out of, out of Anthony Barr for the people that don't know? Well, from my standpoint, you're getting versatility. Absolutely. Uh, um, it, he's absolutely a guy who can not only get after the pass, get after the passer if you need him to, but as we talked about, as Nate just mentioned, this is a guy who had three interceptions last season. He was approaching double digits and pass breakups. He can drop back in coverage very effectively. Combine his versatility with the versatility of Parsons. You get a healthy Jabril Cox back in the mix, who's also who does the very well at covering from the linebacker position. I mean, that's that's kind of a a three-headed hydra. Uh, that's provocative, man. It gets the people going. <laughs> And more and more so, man. You know they've done the background. He, he's a leader. Yeah. He's going yeah. He's going to be a veteran guy, to calm guys down, to keep guys going in the right, right direction. And once he learns his defense, which I don't think it would be hard because Coach George Edwards is a great communicator, mm-hmm. once they, he, they get this thing packed down through Quinn and everything, he's going to be one of those guys that when things get a little shaky because, Shannon, this is what I worry about. This is what I worry about Isaiah and Patrick is, when we play the big boys, mm-hmm. when we play the 49ers and guys of that ilk that can bring that thunder up the middle running, yeah. these are, this is a guy that's going to stand up and put his neck up in there, man. And you know why he's able to do that? Because the boy is 6'5", 260 <laughs> pounds. Right, right. Yeah, he is a physical <laughs> yeah. specimen. He's, a specimen. he's somebody who is a tackling machine. Whenever I've seen him play, right, Minnesota's always had a solid defense underneath right. Zimmer for all those years. And this has been one of the guys that's been a foundational uh, piece for those guys. So this guy is 6'5", 260. But he's a tackling guy. He he, he, what, he think he played like eleven games last yeah, year. He played eleven 77 games. Seventy-seven tackles in those eleven games. Yeah. I mean, you're not getting past this guy at the second level. Not only that, you just touched on it in terms of his ability to lead. You're yeah. taking that responsibility off Micah. You're not forcing him to grow up as fast as you right. as he might have. Right. Been to, right. Van Der Esch is. I don't think he's perceived as a leader. He's been around, but I don't think anybody perceives him as a, as a leader, especially since they didn't really extend his contract. Right. He's playing on a one year deal right now. So Micah Parsons is not. He's a, he's a second year guy. Van Der Esch is playing for his life right now, and now you're able to put somebody who has had a C on their chest for as long as they can remember. Yep. Right. So is that what is is that the the main reason with depth depth depth? Leadership ability, locker room guy. 
I mean, he's gotten a little banged up over the years, right? Well, I think the, the durability is, is a fair question. But if yeah. you look at it, uh, I think most of that is predicated upon him suffering a torn pectoral muscle yep. in 2020. 20. That cost him all but two games. But, again, like we spoke about, he came in last season for the Vikings, 11 games, 11 starts, over 70 tackles, three interceptions, almost 10 pass breakups. This is a guy that when he's on the field, he is making Impact. plays. Yeah. And he's on the field more often than not because looking back over the totality of his career, yes. he's never, with the exception of 20 2020, Anthony Barr has never played fewer than 75% of the games yep. in the NFL. So you look at his trajectory now, 11 games last season, he's fully healthy now. There's no reason to believe he won't hit the ground running and remain on the field for the Cowboys. Absolutely. And when people start talking about injuries, he's not having injuries reoccurring in, right. the, same, in the same position. He had a torn pec, and he had a little bit of a knee, right? So this, these are things that just happen with the flow of the game. But the physicality aspect and what Dan Quinn's been doing over this past over last year and obviously coming into this year, and what he's trying to get these guys flying around, flying to the ball, hidden, making big turnovers, right? It's not always going to come in the aspect of, of interceptions, right? He's trying to get some doggone fumbles. Yeah. And the only way you create fumbles is by running in there and blowing somebody up. And let's put it in a, a, foot, a basketball perspective. Seth Curry. Mm -hmm. The more shooters you put around him, the more guys that, you can, that can play defense around him, that frees him up. And I look at Micah yep. as ourself. Yep. The more guys we can continue to put around him, that, that allows him to be a bigger and stronger weapon. And so it, late in games and late in the season, he won't tire out. You know, and if he start calling defensive games, his, his mind won't shake. So this is every move they're making. Strategic. Yes. And, and the thing is, as you start thinking about this defense at the second level, they've taken care of the interior defensive line, I think, as long as guys yes. can remain yes. healthy, right? Yes. We saw some of that yesterday with, 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 uh, with Hill in there. Big Ridgeway, you right? Gallimore. You still got Gallimore. Gallimore. You, well, you still got Mohana, some goons in it. Exactly. You Ghost got some goons that are going to be in the funky, middle. Man. Yeah, I'm so, telling you. Yeah. So once you, once, <laughs> once you clog up the middle, what are, what are your options as an offense, right? Yeah. Start trying to combo block and start working the edges. Right, right. Well, now you work the edges one direction, who are you going to run into? Uh, you got you got, you got D-Law and you got uh -huh. Michael Parsons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Let me right. go over to the other side. Right. Who we got over here? He's like, oh, okay, well, you got, you got, you know, big. Uh, you got Durant Armstrong. You got Sam Williams. Sam Williams, yep. Yeah, you got right. those guys, and he's like, all right, well, who's, if, let's, if we combo block those guys, who are we going to work up to? Anthony Barr. Right. <laughs> right. There's, you have to pick your poison, and it's a problem, a great problem to have if you're a Cowboys team that has so frequently, uh, particularly in the pre-Quinn years, not had yes. that problem to deal with. It used to constantly be who's going to be that complimentary guy. You always had a guy, for the most part, like Demarcus Lawrence, when, he, you know, when he's healthy, he's mm -hmm. on the field. And then you insert Michael Parsons. Now, in year two with Dan Quinn, you're starting to see the, the influence of not only Quinn, but to George Edwards' credit as well, because he's unheralded in what he contributes to the team his coaching ability this is a defense that if you the defensive front because the addition of Anthony Barr indirectly and both directly are is going to impact positively the run defense for the yes, Dallas Cowboys so. the, it's going to help these young interior defensive linemen because the opposing team sees Anthony Barr staring at them over yeah, the over. crouch, right, over the crouch, over young guys. So I think that Anthony Barr is going to make a massive impact, not only at the linebacker level, but indirectly this this young interior defensive line. Now they get to free up a little bit more, play just f football, not overthink, yeah. not try to overcompensate, not try to do more than their assignment is to do because who's behind them? Micah Parsons, Jabril Cox, yeah. Anthony Barr, and then, okay, well, let's just try it in the air. Oh, well, you want to try it in the air? Trevon Diggs is right there waiting well, for you. Think about right? the size, <laughs> the, the change over the last year and a half, over the size of this defense now. The defensive line oh, yeah, has gotten massive yeah, right, yeah, up front. Yeah, yeah. Now you're going to the second level. Now you got Michael Parsons, 6'3", 245. You go over to Van Der Esch, he's 6'4", 255. You go over to Barr, he's 6'5", yeah. right, 255 plus, right? Then you go to the safeties. Oh, who's going to walk down in the box? Doggone curse. Uh -huh. and you know what I'm saying? So yeah, now you yeah, think about yeah. the size of these yeah. guys. And then when you go back to the history of Dan Quinn, okay, we talked about it all the time. I've always said the reason why Dan Quinn was going to make a, such an impact, you start looking at some of the guys he brings in, Nashawn Wright, McQuamu, some of these longer limb guys, nice. these guys start taking up lanes. So even if we're talking about the run defense, we start talking about the pass defense with these same guys, how much space are they taking up? Right. Right? These guys want to throw the ball. Okay, now these guys have long, lanky arms. You talked about the three interceptions. You go back to one of Barr's most recent plays back in overtime last year. He tipped, a, tipped the Clutch. dog on screen play and got an interception. Clutch. Right? Now, all of a sudden, you're, you're closing those lanes. You're closing the gaps on the line, but you're also closing the passing lanes. This defense is going to be McNasty. What about he's 30 years old. He's at a high-impact position. 
how much how much do you have left in the tank? I'm gonna look at the two guys that played, not me or Patrick. Yeah. But what do you got left in the tank at a high impact <clears throat> position like that at 30 years old? We ain't looking for much during the preseason. Uh, he, if he starts, I mean, I, I'm not saying he's gonna come in and start, but he's an impact player, so he has a great chance to start. That's a for great. Us. That's a great question. You know, is he gonna start? Yes. You know, we, yes. 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 But he's yes. a great impact yes. player. <laughs> yes. His, his contract's gonna say that. Yes. But 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 the thing that's that you have Jarrell Cox, mm -hmm. uh, Luke Gifford is seen to be playing okay. They're gonna have a rotation, I think, yes. yeah. where guys, where we don't have to just wear him out. And and that's what that's is the perfect thing with Quinn. Quinn, t you know, and I don't know if we we earlier today, you know, before we got this big break, we listened to Coach Quinn, and he just specifically said over and over, "I look at guys, I evaluate guys, I have guys in certain positions, yep. so I can put them in the best position." Believe me, he gonna look at Bar. He gonna let. He gonna look at Bar. Him and Coach Epp was gonna get together and say, "What's the best package? Can we create a package? Or do he fit well with the package we already have?" This gives Dan Quinn so much freedom. Yeah. Yes. And just just knowing Quinn personally, freedom. I mean, he can he can go to a three four <laughs> now if he yes. wants to. Right, because Barr can stand up yep. at the defensive end position. Yep. Yep. Um, he can go to a traditional four three. He can go to a four two for all he's concerned. Right, and he can still stand this guy up on the end. Tight ends' abilities to get off the ball now are going to be slim. Mm. Gonna yes. Be slim to none. If you want to go to Micah's side, good luck trying to run by him. He runs a 4-3. Right. Okay, if you want to go to Barr's side, he's just, you're just not getting off the line of scrimmage. Right. right. So the freedom that this gives Dan Quinn, this dude is in a candy shop now. Absolutely. And then you mentioned, you know, uh, the ability to potentially shut down opposing tight ends. You you referenced the guy who did that very well last year in J. Ron Curse. Yep. And now you're talking about, in, in, you know, Dan Quinn brought him up in the most recent press conference here today, mentioning undrafted free agent. Marquez Bell. Yeah. Bell, he said he's going to try to utilize Bell as a well safety baby. and a linebacker. So yeah. now you have Curse and you have the flexibility of Bell being added to someone like Barr who's playing opposite Micah Parsons. You throw in Jabril Cox and it just more and more you start to realize that this defense again might have to carry the Cowboys. All the Cowboys need is the offense to do enough. So if they do better than enough that's all to the good. But if not, You're also adding Jabril Cox to the special teams equation now. Yeah. Taking some of that pressure That's true. off the defense. Very true. Let me, let me ask this, this, this question here, man. You're not allowed and, and to do that on the show. I'm the only one that can ask questions. <laughs> yes, sir. No, well, let me make hey, a you statement. got me all the way over here off my hamburger. <laughs> yes, sir. And now you're going to start well, let me make questions. a statement. And could have had two hamburgers. Let me make a <laughs> Could have had two hamburgers. <laughs> Would you have laced it with okra? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they are, hey, they let me, fried. But, see, we are forgetting about Dante Fowler. I don't think we're forgetting about him. It's just that we're going down the list of, of notables. And okay. But you're right. Yeah. Fowler, Fowler is a notable a yes. an acquisition. Pre, Pre-existing relationship with Dan Quinn. I expect Fowler, as long as Fowler continues to uh, prove himself in camp, yes. I expect Fowler to have a, a critical role in the Cowboys rotation as a defensive end and in certain sets maybe drop back in, you know, in a linebacker capacity. That, that defensive line is very congested. Yeah. The defensive line I love is, it. is a problem it's to a have. Great I love it, man. Competition only breeds only breeds positive mm -hmm. things. Hey, go ahead. You're good, bro. Uh, was, you just getting ready to ask one of your patented questions. I was questions. just going to tell y'all what I what I like the most about this. Okay. Is exactly that ain't your job. You just asked <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you, you broke the mold. Set I, up. Yeah. You broke set the himself mold. up for that. Okay. You broke the mold. Okay. What do you have <laughs> to Nate, say, Nate, we used sir? to talk about this on our show all the time. The right. People Show, Hanging yeah. with the Boys, the, the show of the DallasCowboys.com conglomerate. Yes. <laughs> You'll learn, Patrick. You'll learn. <laughs> um, no, we're the biggest clowns on the other side. Then once in a while we have a good opinion. Right. It, it appears with the offseason moves that they made with some of the big-name guys, the big contracts, guys that you thought were going to be here until their contracts ran out, and what they're doing now is the days of we pay you too much money, you're not going anywhere, you're just here. Like, they are they're, – they're, Creating a competitive, competitive environment. Yes. Yes. Bringing these before? guys in. Did you say that? I, 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 over did a year say, ago. Did you? Over there you go. Especially That's defensively. what I like about this. They're defensively. not sitting on their hands. They're like, I hey, said, let's, get let's get better. Let's get better. When Dan Quinn's name first came up, right, because I, I experienced Dan Quinn when I was in Seattle. I have I had a complete understanding of what he was going to bring to this to this organization. And one of the key words, two words I brought up was culture and competitiveness. Those are two things that he that he lives by. 
you're not you don't just get to show up and just just walk on right, the field. You right. got to earn your keep. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't I don't give a dog on if you've been around this organization doing great things. I'm still going to push you because competition is going to push you towards greatness or push you out the league. One of the two. Either way, I'm a benefit. I, I love what Anthony Brown uh, said in one of last week's press conferences about Dan Quinn. I asked him specifically what makes Dan Quinn such a player coach. Uh, and and Anthony Brown, as blunt as ever, he said number one, he knows how to talk to players, but number two, he doesn't take any blank. You have to get out there. You have to do your job because as much as uh, uh, Dan Quinn acclimates to his players and he can speak fluently with them. If you're not out there doing your job and you're missing assignments, he's going to let you know it. And he's building this competitive nature, this competitiveness yeah. uh, across the board on the defensive side. So between he and George Edwards, it's, there's just new blood yeah. that, that was absent, not to throw shade at anybody, but you didn't necessarily feel this type of air uh, on any side of the ball, uh, particularly defensively during like the Rob Marinelli days. You certainly didn't see it yeah. under Mike Nolan. Dan Quinn comes in. He combines with the experience of George Edwards, who himself is a former defensive coordinator, right? We're talking right. about the pre-existing relationship with Anthony Barr. So for those that may not know or may have forgotten, and sort of George Edwards knows a little bit about football. My, just, just a smidge. 25 right. years of it. Just, just a smidge. So, and, and Edwards was a front runner as far as candidate for defensive coordinator before they brought in Dan Quinn, but they, the Cowboys were able to have their cake and eat it too by having those two together. I think that tandem is, is manifesting itself in moves like Anthony Barr in Dante Fowler, in making sure that the the interior defensive line is upgraded. Like Isaiah said, there are a ton of, I'll put it this way, there are a ton of trees (laughs) being thrown at that uh, defensive line, and I think it's a fantastic problem. They're going to have some difficult (laughs) decisions. We got Ridgeway, we got uh, Gallimore, we got uh, Bohan. Quentin Bohan. I mean, I just would like to just take them out to a local chicken joint, man, <laughs> and just see if we get a boneyard started. You know what I'm saying? The Cowboys are going to have some difficult decisions Very difficult. when it's time for final yes. roster cut down. And you love that. Yes, you absolutely. Know, and other teams love it, too. Other teams are going to be sitting back like, who y'all, who y'all waiting, letting go? Waiting to pick whatever falls from the tree, <laughs> hoping the Cowboys don't get them back on the practice squad if they qualify. I'm going to bring this all the way back to my argument the other day, Nate. Mm-hmm. Does this signing make it? harder for you to keep seven wide receivers because now you got another guy in the mix and you already got a crowded defensive line room you got a crowded linebacker room is that going to affect anything that you do you're not going to have seven wide receivers no 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 how many will have z six six there'll be six i agree with that uh it's going to (laughs) be it's going to get really it's going to get tough Oh, turn, we got to get turn. a little more of that gun pot and line it up. Yeah, I, think, I, I agree with yeah. Isaiah. I think it'll be six, but in those six, you're, you're talking about the guys. I mean, we already know CeeDee Lamb is going to be tasked with moving around a ton. Uh, but absent Michael Gallup and absent James Washington, these other guys, you talk about Dennis Houston, whom I keep pointing out, yep. he's doing great Huge. things, right? Uh, you talk about Kevontae Turpin. We just heard Kellen Moore. Well, Bones Fossil, but also yeah. pretty much Kel- just Kevontae. put a stamp of approval right, on Right, Bones just put a stamp of approval on the special teams front. But what we're seeing out here in practice is Turpin is starting to get more involved on on the offensive side of the ball. I, th- I say all of that to say whatever six, because I believe it will be six, yep. whatever six make it, minus one because CeeDee Lamb's going to do his, his thing, those others are going to be asked to be as versatile as possible oh, to yeah. keep from having to run that plus one in the wide receiver There's room. So I think seven will be heavy, especially with the addition of Barr. you got to wow. run heavy at linebacker now. A lot of people look right past what Bones Fossil said today in terms of Turpin, right? Yeah. His, yeah. His, his outlook on him pretty much saying that he's our return guy. Right. He pretty much Been said that Been looking at him for years. He pretty much just put a stamp on it and said he's our return guy this year. Yes, he I, don't, did. I don't think anybody really picked up on that. Uh, you yeah. made me pick up yeah. on it because I was <laughs> – about sleep. Yeah. What did you hear that? Yeah. yeah turn, no, turn. I'm like, like, wow, so man, many, what, what happened? So many words. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. He's yeah. our return guy. We don't, we're not going to have access to CD this year. He's our guy. So uh, being that, what you're seeing with him and getting forced into the receiver role now, mm-hmm. you're going to play some doggone receiver. Yeah, you are. Because we're not keeping the days of Dante Halls and all that. That's all right, gone. Right, you're not right. just on a roster right. as a return man anymore. Right. Okay? It's just, it's just not happening. Right. So he's going to be – given every opportunity to prove himself at the receiver position because they he's already a lock at right. the return. Right, which keeps them from having to run heavy exactly. at receivers. So, absolutely. All right, fellas, thumbs up or thumbs down? Double thumbs up. 
Science approves. Nate. <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm rolling. Science, Everybody, science we're, are we excited about this? I'm we super just, excited. Yeah. This, this really? is an exciting, this is a splashy and, it, and justifiably so when it comes to being excited about this. This Now, obviously, some are going to say, oh, well, you're hyping a guy. Go look at the film. Go look at his resume. So this is arguably, and, you know, just off the top of my head, you love the addition of Fowler, but as far as 2022 free agency is concerned, this is the splash signing for the Dallas. We're not Cowboys. asking him to play. 100% of the nope, play. You're not. When Minnesota, you're he had not. to play basically the 100% yep, of the play because right. he was he was that versatile. The linebacker room is still Mike. Yeah, him and, yeah. still Mike's linebacker yeah. room. Him yeah. and Kendricks in Minnesota were dangerous. dangerous. Yes. yes. And those they never were, came off the field. Those two yes. were completely dangerous. Yes. As an offensive line, you did not want to have to work up to those guys on the second level. Now, teams are going to have to deal with the Dallas Cowboys in this second level that they're going to present. Wow, can the, the physicality that he's going to bring to this defense. That was already becoming more physical. Yes. It's dangerous. We're talking about a Cowboys team that can potentially throw waves of defensive uh, players at you on any given down. If, if you don't get excited for that, check your pulse. It's been a while since you had that it's been on, a while. on both levels. Yes. Yeah. Defensive check line and linebacker. So, well, there you go. Big thumbs up from everybody on the show. It's an ex If you're not excited, get excited because Isaiah, Nate, and Patrick said you should be excited. Should be. This Absolutely. is going to bring a new dimension to this defense. So, you know what? The defense was already I – mean, it, it was it's nice. It's amazing. Yeah. The offensive line after yesterday is like, dang. It's amazing. Yeah. It's going to get worse. <laughs> it's amazing. Two years ago we had oh, a, man. a historically bad, bad – the worst team in Cowboys history on paper two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then all, we just Flip. said all we need is, you know – be middle of the road, 15, 16, 17, and you got a shot, and they got there. Now you're bringing guys in, and I think you're better now than you were last year. You were wondering in the offseason, were you better? Now I think you're better. Yeah, absolutely. Offense steps it up a little bit. We may be in for a long, a, a long extended, uh, an extended season past round one. Kudos to the entire scouting department. Yes. Kudos to everybody that's responsible for making decisions like this. The one question mark that you had about this defense – was there two things, ability, <clears throat> their, their, their big plays that they were giving up right. and their, their run defense. Well, they just checked the box they on one of those. They just checked the box. And we, have, we didn't even touch on how much improved the safety unit is, right? You're talking about another year for Malik Hooker under Dan yep. Quinn. Uh, you're talking about Donovan Wilson is now completely healthy, and the list goes on. So top to bottom, this Cowboys defense uh, looks like it's going to be quite the problem. There you go. Well, fellas, thank you for joining us. Sure. Isaiah. Absolutely. Patrick. Nate, I'll deal with you after the show. Man. Hey, man, I, I, just, want, I just want to thank American Airlines, man. I really do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got Airlines. my wife home safe, man. I love, I love you, man. American baby. Airlines for bringing yeah. this special edition of Camping yeah. Out. I yep. got one question. I'm sorry, I got one no, question. No, go ahead. Is Shane Hamburger sponsored? Right. Right. No, no, I don't want one question. So, are you really in the Tour de France with that shirt on? <laughs> <laughs> no, my Lord. Send the show off. Send the show right. off. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. You never know who will be on the show, so tune in tomorrow. <laughs> At our normal time, our normal place, this has been a special edition of oh. Camping Out. Chris, thanks for keeping us on Thank the air. Thank you, Beamer. Willie, thanks for keeping the live stream. Yes, up. sir. We're Willie. Right Willie. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow on Camping Out. Thanks, American <laughs> Airlines. Bye-bye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!